Uh, diving is an exceptional activity. It's one of the few sports where you can explore at any level, irrespective of training or experience. It really does give the user a, a, a true participation with the underwater world. It's a fascinating realm which made more so exciting by the use of rebreathers. Historically, rebreathers have uh, always been the domain of the, the military and the commercial diving uh, centres or aspects. And now, with more and more rebreathers coming into the recreational market, 4% of UK divers now use rebreathers. And the idea of this film really is to introduce rebreathers properly so that uh, the potential user can get a better understanding of the rebreather, what rebreathers are about, what the, the fuss is about, what they can do and what they can't do, and uh, more importantly, how they can benefit you, the diver. When I take a breath at the surface, I am inhaling about 21% oxygen. My body uses up some of that oxygen and converts it to carbon dioxide. The gas I exhale is now reduced to just 16% oxygen. So I am metabolizing about a quarter of the oxygen in my lungs, which is only 5% of the total gas I have inhaled. 95% of the gas isn't used at all. Rather than exhausting the exhaled gas into the water, the rebreather tries to turn it back into useful gas capable of supporting consciousness. This involves replacing the spent oxygen and removing or scrubbing the harmful carbon dioxide. All rebreathers share a common level of functionality. A flexible bag to breathe in and out of, known as a counter lung. It must have a means of removing exhaled carbon dioxide, or scrubber canister. It means of monitoring and replacing metabolized oxygen. By making the most of the available gas, you can achieve longer, deeper dives than with a similar amount of open circuit gas. By optimizing your oxygen level, the rebreather can increase your no decompression time or reduce your in-water decompression obligation, allowing you to spend more time enjoying the bottom phase of your dive profile. If an open circuit regulator fails, you tend to know about it very quickly, that you either you can't breathe or it just free flows. A rebreather is far more subtle so it's a lot more monitoring required by the user, hence the systems are there because it can fail in a way that the user may not immediately identify it. And as you go deeper with a rebreather, you've also got to carry additional cylinders to allow for the point that the rebreather may have failed for you. Rebreathers give you the ability to go far deeper, do far longer, deeper dives if you wish to, but the downside is there is a lot more technical planning needs to be done to allow for failures, to allow for team diving to get people back to the surface safely should something go wrong with a rebreather. Experienced rebreather divers will tell you that training is probably one of the most important things that they invested in when they first started and training, like anything in life, you tend to get what you pay for. And there are plenty of agencies that teach rebreathers, but what it actually really does come down to is the individual instructor. So when you're asking around and, and talking to your instructor and to your students, also try and get a feel for what that instructor themselves has done and is doing as well. It's vitally important that the person you're going to learn from is actually actively diving. Try and look at the equipment that that person's using, is it well maintained? You can build up a really good picture about somebody by just looking and listening to what they actually do. Uh, it's important to, to understand that this is now just the very start of the learning process and whilst the uh, training course is designed to be quite intense and thorough, it hasn't yet become habit and habit is recognised as being the, the way in which we do things instinctively. So it's really kind of down now to you as a user to make sure that you do keep practicing your skills and making those drills and skills habitual is really important for your development. Equipment purchasing can be an absolute minefield. From a UK perspective, to buy a new unit in the UK it has to be CE compliant, so it's got to go on through CE. What is CE? It's an independent testing that the unit meets standards for worker breathing, CO2 absorption and a number of other areas. So to sell a unit in the UK it has to have CE marking on it. And what that gives you as a user is it's been independently tested. Minefield of second-hand units in the UK, lots and lots of third-party modifications have been brought in which may or may not enhance the unit. But if you buy a second-hand unit, always send it to the manufacturer to have it fully serviced before you consider getting in the water with it. Try a number of rebreathers out before you buy one. Really understand what you're buying a rebreather for. 
make sure you're getting the right unit. Don't buy the one that's just got all the bells and whistles on. Make sure it's going to give you what you want for the type of diving you're doing. But do your research, understand what it is you want the rebreather for before you go and buy one. Once you're trained and have your equipment, the rest is down to you. It's time to form a ritual relationship with your rebreather that will allow you a long career of bubble free diving. For example, it's a good idea to practice a skill on every dive, that way your skills don't become rusty. Pre-dive checks and correct maintenance routines are the most important thing that you can do to reduce the potential for a malfunction whilst you're diving. Make sure you have a checklist with you on every dive. All the manufacturers make them for use with their equipment and they allow you to systematically prepare and test the rebreather without having to rely on your memory. Rebreathers are starting to emerge now with semi-automated pre-dive checks. Remember though, this is just a part of the process. It's no substitute for thorough routine and understanding on the part of the user. It's not just down to you. Make sure your buddy knows the signs to look out for and also how to help you. It's a really good idea to share your dive plan with the dive centre or boat because rebreather dives can sometimes last for hours and they're much more difficult to follow from the surface because there's no bubbles. If treated with a lack of respect or if you allow yourself to become complacent or you lack the personal discipline to follow diving rules, there is a chance you could end up adding to the sad list of diving casualties. Make sure you're honest with yourself about your willingness to maintain your kit and your discipline to only ever dive within your personal limitations. Ask yourself if the rewards are worth the risks. Be correctly insured and finally, make sure your family understand the risks associated with the sport. For me, rebreather diving it was an obvious choice, both professionally and as a hobby. It, uh, it ticked all my boxes that I required and, and what I'd urge you to do is to really think about the type of diving that you're doing, the type of diving that you want to do and really make sure that the rebreather is the right tool for yourself. When used properly, it's a wonderfully rewarding experience, but please make sure that it is the right experience for yourself.